See the Christ child Come see the King Heaven is stirring While empires sleep Come see the angels Come singing high Sing
Christmas, everybody! I'd like to invite you to stand up and let's sing some carols to get this started today. Please sing with us, Joy to the World. Here we go. One, two, three, come on. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. Yeah. 
be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. There were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds. In fields as they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night, that was so deep. No. There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Angels we have heard on high, sweet. Oh, 
to stand as you are able for the final reading of this Christmas story that details the last visitors to the manger in Bethlehem. This is what we read from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we've come now to pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the the child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down, and they paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Let us remain standing as we continue singing, We Three Kings. Shall see. 
I never have the words to, that seem appropriate for this moment after that had happened. <laughs> and, uh, so I just don't even try to pretend or to fake it or anything. But uh, I, I, I can tell you I am so thankful uh, to be a part of this congregation that is so extravagantly generous, not just through our offering, but through like your willingness to, to give of what you've been given uh, physically by the gifts that you offer. Um, this group of people behind me, they, they've given their weekend to be here, their holiday, to, to be here to lead us in worship, and, and I'm just so thankful for them. And I, uh, a lot of them were here. A lot of them were here yesterday, and yesterday was Nick's birthday, and Nick is playing guitar, and, uh, and today is David's birthday, <laughs> so, so it's a great thing to be able to celebrate with him. And as, we, uh, as we prepare to, to conclude our worship service tonight, we, we do so really by getting traditional, by going back to the traditional passing of, of the peace of Christ, of the candlelight, and, and, uh, and I want to invite us to, to prepare our hearts, uh, but also to get ready with some instructions and rules, because we're going to be dealing with open flame, and, and there's lots of people, and we want to be really careful. And, and, uh, and so what's going to happen in a few moments, we're going to be able to actually pass the light of Christ to one another. And, and, uh, and as we pass, there's rule for, for passing. Um, you know, when you, when you have your lit candle before you, uh, and you're looking to pass the, the light of Christ to the person next to you, you're going to be inclined to want to, like, tilt your candle that's lit toward them and, and say, here's the light of Christ, peace of Christ be with you. And that seems like a really uh, natural thing to do, um, except that when you do that, you end up like scalding them with hot wax and those kinds of things. And that's just not how you want to experience the peace of Christ. And so, uh, and so what will happen is uh, when you receive the peace of Christ or the light of Christ or when you pass it, what you want to want to do with the lit candle, you're just going to turn to the person next to you and hold it upright. And then whoever's candle is unlit, they'll tilt it toward your lit candle and take the, the candle from you, or the light from you in that, in that way. And that way nobody gets uh, burned and everybody experiences the light of Christ. Um, and I'm trusting, I see lots of kids here and I've heard them and I have to tell you, uh, I love hearing the sound of kids' voices in worship. They are like angels. And so I'm so thankful for all the kids that are here tonight. But I'm also thankful that hopefully a lot of them have the battery-powered candles <laughs> and, uh, and not the real ones. And, and so, uh, so we want you to turn those off now because what we're going to do as we seek to, to pass the, the light of Christ is we need to first, you know, appreciate the darkness um, in order to experience the power of the light of Christ and, and, and this light that pierces darkness. We need to actually feel and carry the weight of all the things that seem to weight us down or to, or to burden us. And, and one of the things I've been thinking about all week long is, is a service that we held last weekend. Last weekend, uh, we had, it was the coldest weekend of the year. We held the service called The Longest Night. It was the most popular service all weekend. And it was a service that dealt with the loss uh, and the hurts uh, that people are walking with uh, this season. And, and one of the things I realized is that, that this Christmas, uh, Christ coming, God with us, the light that pierces the darkness comes to meet us in the middle of the darkness. And my guess is you've all experienced some of that. Some of you have been walking through job loss uh, and, and the effects of that job loss creating financial insecurity to the point that your darkness looks like not knowing where it is that you're going to turn or what your financial future might look like. Others of you are walking with illness, diagnosis, in some cases terminal, and you're thinking about how your body might carry you forward or how much time you might have left with your loved ones. Other people are, are facing dire poverty, hunger. There are thousands of children that struggle just to find clean drinking water on a daily basis. That's a darkness of a different kind. There's all of those hundreds of people within this congregation, thousands across the city that struggle with depression, despair. Their world is plagued by shades of gray, in darkness. You don't have to watch the news too long before you realize there is nations of people facing the constant threat of violence, of war, the fear of death. And then there's the darkness that seems to overtake us when we lose loved ones, people we care about deeply, our friends, our family, our parents, grandparents, our children. All of us have experienced darkness, and we get into this place where the darkness seems to be so big and so vast that it overwhelms us. It's in this place that you finally realize that we all yearn for the light. We long for it. We need it. 
Christmas Eve is about this light that pierces our darkness, how God moves toward us to, to meet us where we are so that he might overwhelm us with his power and with his might. My favorite story of Christmas isn't found in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. It doesn't talk about Bethlehem or, or, or stables or cattle or shepherds or wise men. The Gospel of John simply describes this word that is made flesh, that becomes light. I want us to, to hear those words as we wait and long for the light of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Two thousand years ago, in a first century parking garage in this little town called Bethlehem, the light pierced the darkness. Under the cover of night, Christ was born. And though he was just one light, he was strong enough to, to catch people's attention, to, to draw our eyes to it, to lift up our, our spirits. And as this light was raised and, and, and as it grew and matured under the watchful eye of Mary and Joseph and the townspeople of Nazareth, as he continued to, to become the person he would one day beca become, he, he began to live differently and, and to love uh, in ways that, that, would, that would capture the imagination of all of those around him. And by the age of 30, he began his ministry. He began spending time with the ne'er-do-wells, the marginalized, the outcast, the downtrodden. He started to dine with tax collectors and sinners and, and to befriend prostitutes, to, to care for the lonely and lost, to deliver all those who are oppressed, to set them free. And people started to follow him. But then he started to invite others, specifically saying, why don't you come and, and follow me and, and go and do the same things that I do. Let your light so shine before others that others would come to see in you your good works and, and learn to give glory to me. And so he invited his disciples, peace of Christ be with you. And they set out from that place, practicing uh, the love of Christ healing and, and, and casting out demons and teaching and preaching and going everywhere it is that they could go to, to share the good news with great joy that they had witnessed and experienced. And for centuries, this is what's happened. Disciples have gone out uh, seeking to, to meet everybody, to share the light of Christ with the world around them until everybody had a chance to experience it, until eventually somebody shared it with you. And so as we continue this Christmas Eve, I want you to realize the power that this light holds. And when we share it with others, what, what can happen? And one of the things I realize every time I receive the light of Christ is that, that more than anything, I'm washed over with this sense of peace, heavenly peace. And so as we pass the candlelight, I'm going to invite you all to stand as you are able. And, and let us sing together of that heavenly peace as we sing of this silent night. So 
Jesus, Lord. 